it's one of the things that you, you need to know is that when you're teaching about this increase is not that kind of increase that possibly you have in mind, you know, so as I teach, you will get to understand what I mean by increase, because I know most of us, when you see this kind of a topic anywhere on a post or a flyer, of course, that is a way your mind will shift to expect uh, a specific kind of teaching. So that is part of it, but uh, you'll be able to understand more. So I want you to shift your mind to understand what the spirit of God is saying, uh, because as I say here at Watchers Hub, uh, you'll find that the topics we teach is really that what you need. Uh, we may not be able to teach you what you can get everywhere else. We try to major on things that are important for our watchers, and all of you are intercessors. Uh, we normally call intercessors here watchers. So we teach those things that are going to be important to you as a watcher, not necessarily what is available everywhere because we don't want to repeat ourselves. We believe there is great people out there teaching the things that they are teaching and we are all partakers of that and their graces. So here at Watchers Hub, we teach those very specific things that we feel that our own people need to get. So when you're talking about increase, and an increase without measure. I, I began by, by saying that there is a disposition that qualifies you for an increase. There is a disposition uh, that qualifies you for an increase. In other words, you don't just get increase, whether it's spiritually or economically or socially or any other uh, you know, kind of increase. You don't just get increase if you don't have a specific disposition. By disposition, I mean the way of life, the way you think, the way you talk, the way you approach life. So there is a specific specific way you have to yeah, to be um you know, prepared, you know, in terms of logically, uh, spiritually, for you to get increased. And that is one of the things why I'm teaching this, because you realize most of the time when we hear things concerning increase, it is just declaration and declaration. No, like I declare God is going to increase you, your doors are opening, and that is very true those declarations are true however i want you to know that declaration is very very good we all need it we do it however if you're not in a place where those declarations uh, should be able to take you past that area in terms of your disposition it's gonna be declarations after declaration year after year and your life will not change and that is one of the reasons why we have so many people People in the house of God that are not seeing any kind of increase. You have people who can tell you they've been born again for 10 years, for five years, for three years, for a whole year, and they cannot show a significant level of increase. Why? Because we are, we are so much used to hearing uh, declarations and even doing them ourselves, but we, we do not take seriously our disposition. I want you to know that declarations are very important. However, there is a place of authority that allows every declaration that has been made concerning you to come true. All right. So just because you declare I am a billionaire, I am blessed, I am going to be the next thing that is going to shake, you know, shake the world. It doesn't mean that it will happen. Why? Because of your disposition. Where are you? In terms of principles of the kingdom, where are you? In terms of obedience, where are you? In terms of the things that causes and allows you to increase, where are you? That is one area that most of us, uh, people who pray, I think you've always heard people say that intercessors are poor, intercessors are this and that. Well, we are not that kind of, an, of intercessors, and I want you to know you are not, because we are people who know God and who do what God says we should do. So I want to begin by reading uh, Deuteronomy 30 and verses number 16. That is Deuteronomy 30 and verses number 16 says, For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commandments, decrees, and laws. Then you will, will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you enter to possess. So this is very clear. Deuteronomy 30 verse 16 is very clear. So the Lord here is telling us, he was actually telling the Israelites that you, you have to, uh, to, to obey or you have to hearken to, number one, be obedient. This is what I'm calling disposition because most of us ignore this and then we think that things, are, you know, maybe God is taking too long or things are not working, but we are just blind and we don't really see who you are because sometimes the enemy can blind you until you do not see where you stand. Never allow 
the enemy to blind you and you don't see where you are in terms of disobedience. Sometimes the enemy will blind you. You cannot see you. If there is one thing I tell the Lord every time, show me me. Show me me. Show that area that is causing me not to get that breakthrough. Whatever is causing me not to move to that at the next level, the Lord will expect me to move in whichever area of my life. Show me what is my problem. My problem. You know, through the word, through a dream, through a trance, through a prophetic word. Show me me. Because I tell you what, the enemy can, can close your eyes to a level where you don't see it. And one of the things that the enemy will do to close your eyes so that you're not in the right disposition, he will introduce some doctrines that are 50% correct. For example, when people measure so much with the doctrine of grace, which is very good, we love it because the grace of God have basically, you know, taken us from very, very far to where we are. In fact, by the cross, we are supposed to get everything, but you and me know. We still don't get everything. We, we still have sick people. We still have people, you know, who are going through challenges here and there. So grace is very important. But when we take it to the other, you know, end, where at the end of the day, you feel that Christ has done everything. There is nothing for me to do and can live the way I want to live. I'll repent tomorrow, even if I fail today, because the blood of Jesus is sufficient. Now, that is abusing grace. So one of the things that I've learned is that uh, Paul tells us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because there is a possibility of you working out your salvation. There is a possibility of you looking at your life and saying, last year I was here spiritually, in character, in my thought system, in my faith, but this year I can say I have seen God. God has moved me from a place of fear. God has moved me from a place of lying and compromise and all that. And where I am right now, I am seeing the hand of God over my life. Why? Because there is a possibility in the spirit that God is able to help you. And we can see the fruit of the spirit in your life. That's how we know that the spirit of God is at work in your life. So when I'm talking about disposition, like what I read here in Deuteronomy 20 and verses number 16, these are things I'm talking about. Obedience, the commandments of the Lord, the decrees and the laws. You know, when you follow these things, when you obey these things, when you're consistent, why am I saying consistent? Because consistency of obedience, consistency of walking in the word of God is what shows that truly you've been helped of the spirit. When you lack consistency, it is still means that there is, a, there is work to be done. You shouldn't be discouraged because you lack consistency of disobedience or, I mean, consistency of obedience or you lack consistency, you know, of following the word or whatever case it is. It, it, it just means that the spirit of God still needs to help you. But are you positioned in a place where the spirit of God is going to help you until he is formed? until Christ is formed in you. If you forget everything I've said today, please remember, one of the reasons why you're going to get increased without measure in whichever area of your life is when you allow the spirit of God to walk through you until Christ is formed in you. El apostle Bradley, until Christ is formed in you, until, and you see right there is where there is always a problem. Because when you're going through the making of the spirit, when you're going through the process of the spirit, there'll be time for pruning. There'll be time where your flesh will need to totally disappear. You need to die to the flesh. I think I've dealt with that. You know, when I was talking about, I think prayer or something, I, I talked about the flesh and, and dying to the flesh. When I'm talking about the consecration, I dealt with that. But now we are talking about increase here. 
And I want you to understand from the depth of your heart that there is a position, you as a believer, as much as Christ paid for everything, there is a position that you need to be in spiritually. And one of that position is Deuteronomy 30 and verses number 16. Do not allow anybody to fool you and lie to you and tell you you're blessed and you know for sure you're working in immolarity, you're working as a liar, you're not faithful to God and you keep on, you know, God knows when you really want to come out. But it is another thing when now it is your lifestyle because that is a norm nowadays. It is norm nowadays to see somebody on the pulpit or being a leader or being an intercessor. But when you look at their private life, they're living a very miserable life in terms of they're sleeping in the same bed with the devil. So it is common in our days. So, and that is why you find that people love such sermons that are just going to massage what they want to hear. They massage their ears, you know, because we are living in the days where people who want to hear specific things. And you know what? God is not a witch doctor, you know. So sometimes you you may even think that, you know, I've been serving the Lord. I'm sweeping the church. I'm doing this and this. But I tell you, God is a God of purity. That's why I taught about consecration. God is a God of purity. So Deuteronomy 13 verses number 16, it should be your lifestyle. It should not just be a scripture. That is why I said, until Christ be formed in you, you are going to see increase without measure. This may not happen in a day. All right. However, this should not take you forever because we have the help of the spirit. He is our helper. So even if you're struggling, if you truly, seriously, desperately cry to God, the spirit of God will help you to walk in obedience, to understand and follow and obey the commandments, the decrees of the Lord, and you shall be able to see victory. You shall be able to see increase. What do I mean? You will see, you know, uh, you know, when the Lord spoke this scripture to Israel, it's because they were entering their Canaan. And you see what he was telling them. You're not just going to enter into Canaan. Once you enter into Canaan, then I will increase you. So it is not just about you entering your Canaan, all right? You're already in the kingdom of God. You've come to your Canaan. But once you come, there is increase. There is no time where... We're going to say now, you know what, you have had enough of this. I think now we are done with you. No, in the kingdom of God, you know, there is always no finishing line. Like if you, it's wisdom, you increase in wisdom. It is anointing. He can increase you so much. You know, the wisdom you had yesterday is different with what you have today. So there is increase. Once you get into your promised land, once you are in your Canaan, you are going to see increase. Why? Because you have mastered to walk with God. You mastered obedience. You mastered what the Lord wants them. Now, another scripture here, which is Proverbs 18, verses number 20. Proverbs 18, 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. I want to read that again. That is Proverbs 18 and verses number 20. It is says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. In other words, here we are being told that the belly of a man will be satisfied by the fruit of their mouth and what their lips will speak is what you fill your belly. In other words, what comes out of your mouth is what you, it comes in. Is what comes in, is what feeds you. So the words of your mouth, your mouth is what feeds you. In other words, your mouth will create your world and that is the world you're going to live in. So what I want you to understand is that once you have done these things, once you've been obedient, because we can talk about obedience, we can talk about following the law of the Lord, we can talk about, you know, being that good Christian, we can talk about all these things. But if your mouth, if your mouth is not circumcised, if your mouth have not learned to speak the things you ought to speak. I tell you, you're going to pray for 10 hours and at the end of the day, you're going to disqualify yourself. Why? Because there is a disposition of your speech that is, uh, that is expected for you to work in increase. All right? So in other words, what I want you to understand is that 
spirits, they feast on words. Spirits, they feast, they thrive on what you say and what you think. That is why the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Because once you think it, it is a field of spirits to feast on and to ride on. So spirits will rely on you what you're saying because what you think is what you say. All right. So spirits will thrive on that. So when you keep on speaking things, and I know this is common. I know we keep on hearing this. It is nothing new, I'm telling you. But the truth is, there is cognitive knowledge of what you speak. Like, you know, you should say the right things, you know. So we all say the right things. But that is just cognitive. It is just in your head. It has not entered your spirit. You, you have not known and known and known beyond your knower that God will increase you. You know how you know? It's because when you get a little thing or even a major thing to discourage you or to take you out of you know, whatever you're expecting to happen, maybe you're expecting you know, to get married by now, but you don't see any signs of anybody proposing to you. Automatically, you begin to frown inside you. You may have a smile, but inside you, you're frowning. Why? Because as much as you spoke the right thing, that thing was just cognitive. It was not in you. There is a way truth is actually made one in you. It is in you. Why? Because Christ is the light. That thing becomes light. That truth becomes the truth in you. Are you understanding? So at the end of the day, that cognitive knowledge, you know that you're blessed, you're going to increase, you're going to become this and this. You know that, but what you're saying with your mouth is not just cognitive. Now it is a reality. So most of us, that's where we fail because we have the cognitive knowledge, but it has not become light in us. The truth has not been formed in us because Christ is truth. That is why I began by saying, until Christ be formed in you. So you will find a lot of believers confessing good things, speaking big things, even when we go to church and the preacher is declaring, we can agree, we conquer, we go, the preacher is saying, but five years later, Still, we have not seen that reality. Why? It was cognitive. It was never bought, it was never back in your spirit. It was ne it, it never became one with you because there is that place you get the word of God and you become one. You, you, you become intimate with the word of God, you know, until the offspring of what you and the Holy Ghost or the word of God is going to give back to is now the reality. I hope I am clear and you're understanding what the Spirit of God is teaching you. So these are the dispositions of increase. And we keep on making mistakes over and over again. And we realize at the end of the day, year after year, there is no breakthrough. There is no increase. We are going around the same mountain. Why? We are speaking right, all right? But that speaking right, if you look at it from in you, you will notice it is not the, the it, it is speaking only, but it is not truth in you. That is why you're not getting results. So let's get to that place where your words are not just words that you have in knowledge, but they are full of God. It's faith that is spoken. All right. Because you see what the Bible says in Isaiah 16, verses 22. Isaiah 60, verse 22 says, The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty man. And the Lord, in its time, I will do this swiftly. So God is committed to bless you. God is committed to lift you. God is committed to increase you. He is committed. And he says here, that the least of you, even that person that feels I really don't have much, I, I don't even, you know, I don't, as people are giving thousands of dollars or shillings of rands or euros and pounds of, of offerings and tithes, I don't have much. You feel so little. But here the word of God is saying, Isaiah 60, 22, that the least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. So even from where you are, the Lord is committed to increase you. The Lord is committed to do great things with you, even when you feel surely you are small. So in this thing of increase, you are not disqualified by where you are. The Lord is committed to increase you. So 
Th there is nobody who have an excuse to say, you know what, when people are giving big offerings, I didn't have much. When people are tithing big, I didn't have much. Maybe that is the reason why I'm not increasing. Maybe, no, I tell you, this is, this is the word of God. That is, so God is aware of your smallness. God is aware of your small offering. God is aware of your small whatever you feel is more. If you're just obedient with that small, from that level of small, are you getting? And you agree to this word that he's going to increase you and you're going to become a thousand even when you are small. I tell you, when that becomes light in you, when that truth becomes one with you that you cannot be convinced even by economy that that is not true when you get there when you believe and you believe and you know it in your know that the lord will increase you and you're going to become mighty i tell you there is nothing to stop look at the woman who was a widow the wife of a prophet, she went to Elisha and he, and, and, he, and he told her, you know, your little oil that you have, go and borrow jerrycans and, uh, and, and sell that oil. And this woman began to pour her little oil in all the, 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 the you know, the containers she had uh, borrowed. She began to pour and the little, by the way, it became much and she was able to pay her debt. How? Because God is committed to increase you, even when you are small, even when you don't have much, your small education, maybe you just have a certificate and people nowadays, when you look at all the job qualification, they are all talking about degrees and PhDs. You know, you don't find a, a, a job offer that says they're looking for somebody with a certificate. Even if that is your case, I tell you, this woman, when she met Elisha, the Bible says, he said unto her, that little oil you're saying you have, that is your miracle. But this is what you need to do. Go and borrow containers. And you are going to empty that little oil in those containers that are empty. And at the end of the day, you are going to pay your debt with that thing you're calling small. Why? Because our God is the God of increase. He is committed to increase you. He is committed to expand you. He is committed to make you better. He is committed to increase your children, to increase your family, to increase your business, and to increase your finances. He is committed, even when you feel like you have something very little. I know I'm talking to some of, some of you here, and I know for sure, because I was praying for you, the Lord was showing me most of you are in debt. Most of you are in debt, whether it's in terms of credit or credit cards, or you're just in debt in whichever way. And the Lord was telling me that he is intending to increase you. Just be obedient. Just be obedient. Just be obedient. The Lord was telling me when he gave me this topic that we are going to see increased rates here at Watchers Hub. We are going to see increased rate of people getting new appointments, new contracts, salary increase. I, I was just seeing expansion. I was just seeing, uh, you know, uh, beacons being moved, if you know what is a beacon. A beacon is that kind of a, of, of, of a stick that shows you the landmark where the land goes up to so i was just seeing it being moved to a, a bigger place you know and what i want you to know is that the lord is committed to bless you to increase you and so you see when i'm talking like this please do not hear me like the way we keep on hearing because that hearing cognitively is what causes us not to see what we hear and what we, we the Lord have said we are going to get. So when you hear me today, let your spirit hear me, not your mind. Let your spirit connect with what the spirit of God is saying, not your mind. Your mind is important, but what your mind hears, what your ears hear, what you hear in your, in your mind, bring it down to your spirit. Let it be married in your spirit and become reality. And in that way, you're going to see increase. I tell you, some of you, your companies may not even be planning to give you an increase. Some of you, you may not even be thinking that you can get a, a business because you've always been employed. But I came to tell you something. We are in a season of increase. You know why? Because the world is that. The Lord was telling me, the believers, remember last time I, I, I told you about the remnants, okay? I talked about the remnant, that the Lord is going to increase the remnants because the world is dark. We live in very dark times. 
So we who are the remnants, we are the ones that God is going to increase, that we may do what we need to do efficiently and quickly on time. So God is increasing us, not just so that you can have a lavish life. Having a lavish life is normal for us. Those of you who have been here for a long time, you know, I always say that for us to have good houses, to have good cars, to have money in the account, it is not something that we need to celebrate about. No, it is a normal realm. It is normal. It, it, it should not be something that causes us to stand up and shout amen. It is normal. You living a good life, a good house, the things that we qualify as blessings, you see, those things, that is normal here. So when I'm talking about increase, it's not just about the lavishness of life. That is actually very common because that is normal. That is common. It's, it's nothing. Even unbelievers, they live in prosperity. Those who have applied their own principles because every kingdom has got its own principles. You understand? So they live the kind of life that we qualify as a blessing. But then I want you to understand the increase I'm talking about it is because of what God wants to do with his church at this specific time. We are living at a time that is very, very dark. So spiritually, remember I said last time, spiritually, that the Lord is going to increase us. He's going to increase us. Some of you, you may not need to go and preach in a specific country, even when you see in a dream that God has called you to go preach in a, that specific country. This is not the time to possibly think you need to pack your bags and go. Just find out which, which formula of preaching does the Lord talk about. Because we are living in a time we are going to accomplish what God has called us to accomplish in very unusual ways and means. Very unusual ways and means, I tell you. Very, very unusual. Very, I believe in this time, there are watchers that have been standing faithfully before God. And God will take you to foreign nations, whether in reality or in the spirit. And you're going to just go to that nation. And as your feet step in that nation, because the Bible says where your feet shall tread, you will possess. But just your feet touching that nation, you automatically release the freedom of God over that nation. And people will just start coming to the Lord. Some of you, Lepradia Consalia, have you never prayed until if you pray for Australia, you can literally see it in front of you. I remember one time I was praying for Europe. And of course, I know we all know Europe maybe from geography. So we may not say we know every little village in Europe. And as I was praying, the Lord took me to a specific village. I will call it village uh, because it's so small. Uh, to, uh, let me call it maybe town. I went to a, spe a specific town in Europe. And I can tell you, I've never even thought about something like that or thought that is in the mouth. So when I pray, because I, I'm seeing myself there, I'm seeing myself in that land. I'm holding to the soil of that land and I'm praying for this land. And of course the name, I knew the name. So when I came out of that experience, I went to Google just to verify that I'm all right with the spirit, I'm not, I've not lost it. I went to Google, I typed that name and I tell you what, that place is exactly where I was. The name is, uh, the name is the same name I saw in the spirit. The place, because I could tell it's a remote place. There are people, I would tell there, there, were, there was like more farming than, than, you know, town life. And so when I'm talking about what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about increase, I said last time, you need to come, we, we are beyond dreaming. Dreaming is good, but I tell you, you need to go beyond that. You need to go beyond, let the spirit of God expand your capacity to do spiritual things, your capacity to carry spiritual things. So when I'm talking about increase and, and the Lord is going to increase us, it's because of of the, the times we are living in. So that's why I said, when you hear increase without measure, don't just think about cars and houses. That is normal, my brothers and my sisters. That it should get here and in your spirit, 
That is the normal realm. So when you're talking about increase, yes, he will increase us economically. He will increase you economically. But as you know, when it becomes abnormal, it is when it goes beyond you having cards and houses, and it goes to a point where if God needs his servant to minister in a specific nation, you can just ask how much is the bill. So the Lord have not just increased you financially, he has expanded your heart. So when you hear about a crusade that is going to happen in Australia, your heart is pumping to be the one who is going to pay for that crusade. Because how many people do we know in the church today? They have the money it takes for the gospel to be preached, but their hearts are closed. So the Lord needs to increase our capacity because when he increases your capacity, there is nothing that you cannot do for him. When he increases your capacity to carry the burden of the kingdom, there is nothing you cannot do for him. And when you get to that level, I tell you, money becomes common in your life. When you get to that level, that your capacity to carry burdens for regions, for nations, for families, when your capacity to carry the burden of the Lord about territories, I tell you, money will become a common real. Elapo. I am still looking for a time, and I believe the time is now, when some of you begin just texting me, Pastor Joyce, how much do we need for this night vigil we are having? What is the budget? And you'll be like, uh, what is the account number? I've done the transfer. We are in that time. The Lord will not allow us to beg when the kingdom of darkness has intensified the methods. The kingdom of darkness has intensified the means. Look at it right now. Go get a 10-year-old in the kingdom of darkness. Get a priest in the kingdom of darkness who is 10 years old. With you, who is 20, who is 30, who is 40, if the two of you are put in the same platform and it's supposed to be power versus power, there will be a problem. You have a very big problem because in the kingdom of darkness, the devil has intensified to equip them with everything they need. And so God is raising priests who are also increased, they have capacity. You don't, you, you, you understand what God is doing, whether it's about money, you understand, you need to do this. Whether it's about, you know, uh, kingdom principles, you know what you need to do. When it comes to altars, you understand those things. Are you hearing me? Are you, I, I hope I am getting clear. So those are the, when you hear me talk about increase, those are the things that the Lord is doing at this specific time. It is not just a kind of increase that we keep on talking about, that you're going to be a millionaire and the whole church goes, hey, because we have never gotten to that realm. I tell you, if there is a time, there is so many opportunities of making money, it is now. You're asking Pastor Joyce how? Just get in the spirit. Just get in the spirit. Number one, get in the spirit after you have obeyed the kingdom principles of prosperity. Once you obey the kingdom principles of prosperity and you are consistent, when you get in the spirit, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised the opportunities that are there. But when you are not obedient, when you are, you will notice your eyes are closed. You will continue laboring laboring, hoping something is going to happen. And you're wondering, what is happening? Have you ever sometimes drove or just maybe walked around and you, you look at clubs and maybe a supermarket where there is a lot of people and you can see how money is changing hands. You can see people, a, a club is full of hundreds of cars. Men and women have packed there to drink. You, a believer, all you want is your house rent, but you don't have. All you want is school fees, but you don't have. I tell you, that thing is switching. That thing is switching. That is what I'm saying is increase without measure. It is switching around. Why? Because God is expanding our capacity even to be able to, to, to be obedient to him. So when you go before God at this time, before you just run with your flesh to release money and to release resources, those things are good. Let the Lord work in you. 
Let him work in you because as I said, he's committed to bless you. He's committed to increase you. He's committed to do you good, but look at you. I began by saying, let the Lord show you, you, who are you? Who are you when you have that money? Who are you when it comes to obedience? Who are you when it comes to temperance? Some of us are people who are very angry. Some of us are very jealous. Some of us, all we do is talk about other people. So we, 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 we do not have the capacity to carry God. Some of us are full of pride. So if the Lord will add millions of that pride, you are the kind of people that will walk around abusing everybody. You're the kind of person who walk around telling people they don't even know how to pray. That is why they are poor. Why? Because the Lord has not humbled you. You have not allowed the Lord to humble you. But even when people do not have, you will not judge them. You will love them. Provide for them. Have the compassion of the Lord. You'll be compassionate to people even when you feel you shouldn't be compassionate. Because these qualities that are of Christ in our midst nowadays, they are very rare. It is very rare to find a compassionate person. And I'm not just talking about compassionate of just saying, oh Lord, I pray the Lord you may remember this person. No, I'm talking about compassion that causes you to go out of your way to get a solution for a person, a family, a child. That is now what is called compassion. When Christ was compassionate about anybody, he did something about it. So it's okay for you to feel sorry, but if you're really compassionate, there will be something that you're going to be able to do. You have the heart of Christ. So let the Lord increase your capacity first, your capaci capacity to love, your capacity for mercy. Then the Lord is going to get you to a place where you, if you have the ability, you know, you will take care of a whole territory, whether by prayer, whether by your finances, whether just by your love, you'll be able to do it. I hope you're getting help. I hope you're getting help today. I don't know how many of you have ever, uh, I think most of you, you know me from Waters Hub. Maybe you've never seen me, maybe minister anywhere. But it's very interesting. You will find me most of the time if I begin to pray for people, if I begin to pray for people like one-on-one, -on -one, there are two things that happen. It's either I'm going to have the face of a lion, like, you know, I just want to cast that demon or whatever it is, I, I want to do that. Oh, I'll be crying. I'll be, I don't know that any one of you have ever seen me. I'll be, people will even be wondering what is the problem with this one. I'm, my, I'm not talking about crying that you just wipe. No, I'm talking about tears flowing down my cheeks. I can't control it. I'm just crying. I don't know why I'm crying, but inside me, I feel, I feel, you know, I can just feel this is Christ's compassion. He is basically here performing a miracle for these people. So I'm just acting out what Christ is feeling in me. And sometimes when I cry like that, I may not even be able to do much. I will just lay my hands on the people because Christ is already doing what he wants to do for these people. Now, that is Joyce. There is a way when you allow Christ to be formed in you, there is a way each and every one of us is going to behave. Whether is you may not be a preacher like me, you might be in business, you might be in, in, in some other you know, kind of career. But now when Christ is formed in you, you will manifest like Christ when you go out there. You, even if it's a business world, uh, whether you are a student, you will manifest like Christ who has been formed in you. You get to a place you realize this is basically not me, this is just Christ in action. Now, I, I want to read another scripture here, Ephesians 1.17. This is, this is a scripture that, please remember this scripture. Ephesians 1.17 says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom, one, and revelation, that you may know him better. That sounds flat. If you read this scripture with your mind, it sounds flat, okay? It is saying, Ephesians 1.17, I keep asking that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. So that may sound flat. And maybe you, even when you're reading that scripture, you just pass it. There is, you know, most of the time when the Lord have not helped you, even when you read the scriptures, it is just some story, you know, sometimes you like, I, I have been there where you're reading the Bible, it's just flat, you just accomplishing five chapters a day, two chapters a day, a chapter a day. There is no, no light in it, you're just reading it. But I want you to see something here. You see, when you allow Christ to increase you in wisdom and in revelation, all right? There are so many things that you'll be surprised how soon you should have gotten an answer. And I don't wanna dwell here, so I wanna just give you a few examples. When you hit that note by the spirit of God, of wisdom and revelation, there are answers you'll be able to find. You may not need to pray 10 hours. Is it wrong for you to pray 10 hours? No. In fact, you might need those 10 hours to hit this level of wisdom and revelation. You understand me? So I'm not talking down prayer or fasting. I believe in it 100%. That is why here we fast and pray on a daily basis. So I believe in it. But you see, if, if you do not understand that you're doing those 10 hours and your mind is already open to specific realms of wisdom and revelation, you will pray and you're still in the same level. Now, I'm gonna give you some few examples here so that you're able to understand what I mean. You see, like when Jehoshaphat, oh, and I'm not gonna read that, I expect that you know the Bible. When Jehoshaphat and Israel were going to war, okay, now when they were seeking the Lord in prayer and fasting, the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord came upon a specific prophet who was a, a Levite. I told that last time I spoke about priesthood. And when the spirit of God came upon this Levite who was on the lineage of priesthood, he said that the Lord says, you will not need to fight this fight. And what happened? You know, that was one of the Bible wars where we saw singers went in front of the people who are normally supposed to be in front. Those are the warriors. So seeing as they took the battle line, they were in front. That is wisdom. You may call it prophecy, but it is beyond prophecy. And it gives you solution. And let me tell you the truth. If there is a place now we miss. Those of you know me, if you come to me and you tell me of a problem that you have faced for a long time and you have done A, B, C, D, there is one question I always, especially, if you go to the direction of telling me you've done this, you've prayed, you've fasted, one thing I ask you is this, and what has the Lord told you concerning this situation? Since you've been praying and fasting, since you've done all the things you are summarizing to me you've done, what have the Lord seen? You know why I ask that? Because I know when you pray right, you will hit to a specific level of wisdom and revelation that will give you an answer. The answer would come most of the time to show you the problem. And then you know now what to do. Or you need to go back to God now that you've known the problem. The spirit will need to show you what to do. But truly, most of us who pray, 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 and at the end of the day, you cannot say nothing. For example, if you've been trusting God in a specific area, whether it's marriage or finances or ministry or education, and it's been a long time you're trusting God, if you really cannot hit a revelation on it, you need to do up there. Because the devil has blinded you. You cannot see in the spirit. You cannot decode the demonic, diabolic, you know, things that the devil has done that you don't even know why you are there so long. And I know I'm challenging your spiritual intelligence and I intend to do that because I've seen it over and over again. When I realize somebody has a major problem and, 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 and the Lord leads me to pray for this person, I'll pray and pray. And most of you are aware. I'll come back to you and ask you, I saw this and this. Do you know anything about this? Why? I am not in your life. But when I saw the Lord about your situation, I saw, so that you will call it prophecy, but that is wisdom 
and revelation. Because what wisdom does, it now causes you to, it brings light in a dark situation. It brings light. So now you're able to see, okay, uh, so if the Lord is saying this battle we wouldn't have to fight, then this is what we have to do. So you guys who are carrying spears and arrows and all that, this is not your battle. This is the Lord's battle. And how does the Lord fight? The Bible says when you worship him and when you praise him, he will come and dwell in the praises of his people. So you know what signals? Since he dwells in our praises, since when we worship him, he comes and beings together with us. So that is a formula we're going to use. So it is a, it's a level of wisdom that you unlock and answers are found. So why most of us, we don't get increased? It is because we are so blinded by the devil. Even when you pray for five hours, three hours, 21 days fasting, 40 days fasting, still you cannot decode what demon are you dealing with? What exactly is this? What is the problem? Why can't you get past this level? There is one of the things I'm dedicated to do in my own personal life and my family is that I will not fight a devil that I am not aware. I'm not going to do some blind blows. No, I want to know what demon is this so that I'm able to, to know exactly what is happening. So, for example, I know most of you uh, know, um, you know, uh, like this chant we always sing. Uh, I'm sure most of you know this chant. If you hear that chant, to most of the people who know it's just some sound, it is sound. But where that sound came from, and it came out as a chant of war. You see, you will sing it as something that we sing as a song. But where it was bound from, and it came out as a chant of war. Because when you are in the spirit, there are places you will get. Then you just hit a revelation. And you're like, okay, now this one is not binding and losing. It is aliyah. So you see, so when I'm talking about the increase, when I'm talking about obedience, when I'm talking about let Christ be formed in you, because even, even when you go into prayer, since the Holy Ghost is the one who prays through you with groanings that cannot be understood, you will hit realms of wisdom and revelation. In fact, most of the answers that I got in my life in areas that are very hard. It was because of this realm of wisdom, revelation. Most of us call it prophecy. It is prophecy, yes, because it becomes maybe like prophecy, but it is actually beyond prophecy. It is wisdom. It is wisdom. I remember like one time, you know, uh, I think maybe I've shared this before. I wanted, I, I, I wanted something desperately, desperately. And I went into prayer. I prayed for five hours straight. Yes, so. By the time I was done, I did not only hear the name, but, but the number of whoever would give me what I wanted. Yes. And when I just sent a message, not to ask, the reply was the answer of what I wanted when they responded to me. So. That is what I'm talking about. Now, it may not just come that way. Sometimes it will just be a thought or a feeling. I've had times in my life, I have had a challenge and mostly financial challenge. And I think this is gonna help most of you. There are times I've had financial challenge. And now when I say financial challenge here, for me, I'm not talking about few thousand. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands. Money that you cannot ask somebody to give you. Money that you cannot, you know, go borrowing. It just has to be the Lord. And I just feel in me, I pray, I fasted, I'm a trader, I don't negotiate trading, I give. So what do I need to do? Since I've been obedient, since I've done principally what I need to do as a believer, and then I just feel praise. And I begin to praise. 
and, I, and I'm not even about talking about singing a song. I can sing if I feel like a song, but mostly what comes out of me is that praising God and thanking God. And how do I do it? I'll be like, you know what, Lord? I bless you today. I thank you because you have never failed. It is you who did this and this to so-and-so. Then I'll now go to the Bible. I'll go to the Bible now. It is, it is not something that I'm trying to look for, no. Because the word of God has become part of me. I'm retrieving that truth out of me. So you begin to hear me say things like, Lord, is it not true that we were with Esther when they were supposed to die in the, the few days they were supposed to die? Was it not true that came through for her? Even when they didn't know what to do, I know you're going to come through for me. That truth for me is not scripture. No, it is truth. It, it is in me. It, it kind of comes out of some inner chamber in me. I'm just, I'm just not reciting it. So even the way I would say to the Lord, is like I'm just affirming who he is. So I'm praising him. I'm praising him. I'm like, Lord, it is true I am here in this kind of fire. But when I remember very well, just the other day, you are with the Hebrew boys in the fire and they did burn. Neither did they smell like fire. I know, Lord, you're with me. I tell you what. The times I've done that, while I'm still in that kind of mode of dance giving and praising God, I get money. I get money. And I told you, it is not a few thousands. I've gotten hundreds of thousands when I'm still in prayer. But how I know it is not normal prayer, it is because of what is coming out of my belly, my inside. The way I'm talking to God, you know, it's not that kind of thing. We go to church and then he's present like, hey, Lord, you are good. You know, what I'm... no, that is here. It is coming from here. When you do that, it is not normal. It's a revelation. It's a kind of revelationary praise. Thanksgiving. So what Ephesians 1 and 17 is saying, there is a possibility in the spirit that God will take you to that level where he will give you wisdom and revelation. Now, when that wisdom and revelation comes, then increase, and it cannot be bound again. I hope you're getting help. I'm almost done, but I hope you're getting help. I hope you're getting help. Zalabo Kataria, Sentalia Baconsalia, Bacante Labradia, Santalia Baconsaleba Sire. Now, this kind of wisdom and revelation I'm talking about, you see, if you look at the church, or let me say the body of Christ, this level, it's, it's there but we have not maximized it. That's why we don't increase because as I say, this is, it's like a key. It opens a key for increase. It opens a key for increase, all right? That's why when people hear about a prophet, they go to the prophet. But unfortunately, most of the time, we find prophets who are just going to tell us, no, I see this and this, I see. So, you, you, you end up having a drawer in your house full of prophecies you have recorded, you have written, but they, they did bring the ability of you opening a specific door of increase. All right? I think I've given one, uh, I've avoided to give a lot of, uh, you know, people testimonies because it's not good when you keep on saying that somebody came to me with such a problem and the Lord told me this, I don't like doing that, but there is an example of always given, which I, because I give it anonymously, and I want to give it again so that you understand what I'm talking about. Some years ago, the Lord told me about a couple who are trusting God for a child. Remember, I didn't know them. I just hit in the spirit that kind of revelation. And the Lord even told me that the reason why they can conceive is A, B, C, D. is because this man have had another, another child with another woman and he abandoned that child. And so this child and the Lord gave me the name, 
This child has been crying to the Lord for their father, to find their father. All right? Now, this man left that child and the mother and married somebody else, and now they can conceive. That is the example of what I'm telling you about a level of wisdom revelation. That one opens that door to increase. Because now if it is that person who is hearing that, then they know, okay, so what is the key for me to get this miracle? The key is to look for that child. Once I have that child, this marriage is going to prosper. I'm going to get the fruit of the womb. And please understand, this is a special case. This is not everybody's whatever answer all right people have different reasons why they cannot get specific breakthroughs sometimes the lord will show his witchcraft okay sometimes the lord will show the, so but whatever happens the revelation that's why i said it's not prophecy is that is knowledge the lord gives you is is the revelation knowledge i think i've explained this this is one of the gifts that the lord has given me revelation knowledge you can see it in the spirit or it can just come in your mind. It can just come and you know. Sometimes I go to pray for people and I can look at you and I can tell you you're from Embu. And then this person is looking at me, they're like, how do you even know I'm from Embu? How do you even know that I'm this and this? I don't know, it is just dropped in me. You understand? But now being told you from Embu, it is not, it is an answer for nothing. Some, sometimes the Lord will begin by revealing those things so that you have faith in whatever you're going to hear next. You understand? Now, that is not a realm for prophets. This is where I'm coming. This is not a realm for prophets. This is a realm for every one of you. It's a realm. And please, I want to begin hearing this from you. It will encourage me. If from today you pray and God gives you that ability to decode. For me, I like calling it decoding. Decoding issues, what their body powers are fighting you. What is fighting you? Why can't you? I mean, it's been 10 years of you praying for marriage. What is wrong? What is this that you cannot be? Uh, how defeated is God that you've been praying for so long there is no answer? No, you know what? My brother, there is something you're not seeing. There is a revelation you have not hit. And once you hit that revelation, that door of marriage open, that door of financial increase open, that door of your children getting free from drugs or whatever thing that has come against them, it opens. So that's, that's how you also get increase. So together with obedience, together with speaking right and getting the revelation in your spirit, there is a dimension. And that dimension, listen to me, that dimension, I can tell you something. You will not get that dimension with small prayer. No. I know you hear a lot of people telling you, oh, it's not about praying long. It's not about fasting. Uh, God is just, okay. If you want to believe that, go ahead. But I tell you, I have prayed small and I have prayed long. And I've come to realize how I hit that level of revelation, wisdom, knowledge is when I prayed long in terms of hours and long in terms of days all right sometimes it will just be one day uh you know several hours and then there we go kaboom sometimes it's just 30 minutes maybe i've been fasting for three days then i am in in, in my fourth day and in 30 minutes of prayer then there goes the knowledge and you know like what i said earlier i'll just be in a place I feel I just want to praise him. And you know, the reason why I will feel it, it is because I've been in the spirit. Maybe I've been praying, I've been in the spirit. So even my feelings, they're not just the feeling of the flesh. Because when you have the feelings of the flesh, after praying for three days without answer, you feel discouraged. So when you're in the spirit, you feel you can praise and you'll be able to deliver that praise. You understand? And when you start to get those kind of revelations, you begin now to open doors of increase. Now, if you remember Jacob, now let me talk to you because I know most of us issues is financial. When you remember Jacob, how do you think he was able to have an angel coming to him in a dream and showing him what he needs to do for him to get restoration? of what Laban the uncle has stolen from him.
for 20 years. You think uh, Jacob just was living a careless life? No. This was a man of covenant. His lineage could not, where he was coming from, could not allow him to be a careless man. I could not allow him. You understand? And you know how I know? Because Laban himself told him, he said, I have realized that since you came to my house, I have increased. So he knew his altar, his God, is, is, is a powerful God. But now, as much as he knew that, he still couldn't pay him right. So it is not possible that Jacob lived carelessly and just landed onto a revelation on what to do for him to get his wages. Because he was getting ready to leave. All right? But he's not going to leave without what belongs to him. So the angel of the Lord came and showed him, this is what you have to do. You see, this is not different. This is not different. You see what we do, some of us, we are very faithful tithers. Please listen to me now very, very carefully. Some of us are faithful tithers. Some of us are faithful givers. But with that, you have got no revelation at all. So, because revelation is a real, wisdom is a real. So even when opportunities will be in front of you like this, because your eyes have not been opened by the spirit, you will not see those opportunities. Even when the, those opportunities are not in front of you, because there is a realm of wisdom and revelation you haven't gotten, you will not be able to land in a place where it shows you what you need to do. That's why you keep on people, people are keeping on saying, I'm a good tither, I'm a good giver, I'm not getting results. Okay, I'm not sleeping hungry, I'm not sleeping outside, but I, I would have expected much more. You know what has happened? There is a realm of revelation. There's a realm of wisdom that you have not hit. Sometimes it may not come as something spiritual. Sometimes you just get a divine connection and kaboom. You harvest. So there is accumulation of spiritual, you know, rising that now causes you to get that realm. So I came to tell you, watchers, be real watchers. Watch long. If you're still struggling in a personal level, how will we go to the nations? How will we take care of territories? We have to say no. Our God is a God of increase. We know faithfulness. We know what is to be obedient. What is this demon that is standing between me and my finances? You take it by the horn. I think I've ever given you a testimony. I've given you my testimonies of how I've gotten into financial breakthroughs. I and mean, this is hundreds of thousands. This is, this is thousands of dollars. But I had one testimony of one man of God. And he gave a testimony that I, I can't forget. And this is what he's saying. He's a, he's, a, he's a man who is famous. And so you respect a man who is famous when he's saying for him to get married, the people will bless him and people will, you know, it, it's because he was living in a realm of finances. But now he's saying for him to get married, but there is no money. People who used to give and no longer to be seen. And it was like, this is abnormal. I'm talking about somebody, even their dress code, they put on designer clothes. So I'm not talking about somebody who is trying to know money. This is somebody who have money. But when his wedding is supposed to happen, there is no money. He said he locked himself in the room from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Not playing joke, straight stretch prayer. By six, he fell into a trance. And he saw his grandmother his grandmother went to the farm. And this is not in the spirit. She went to the farm. She began to dig and to dig and to dig. And she got a bag, a plastic bag, you know, like what we get from the supermarket, a plastic bag full of money. And she handed it to her, to him. And the trance ended. And he said, immediately, Money began to stream in. Money began to come. And in few days, he had extraordinary provision for the wedding. 
You see now what happened? There is a way he had to go deep in the spirit. The revelation he hit was the grandmother or whatever that spirit was presenting because I've taught you, spirits can, can camouflage. You, you don't care whether it's your grandmother or whoever it was, as long as they are digging and removing and giving you that money. You know there was a spirit involved that, and, and then I believe the reason why there is a grandmother here is because this has been a bondage of generations in this family. That when they need to get married, this thing must happen. They might not have money to get married. It was a generation of bondage. That's why you're seeing a grandmother because she's representing previous generation and she's digging deep because it's a deep thing. And that is how he got money. And until today, that man would never struggle. So this is what I'm talking about. So your increase is there. It's there. It's not the Lord. Please hear me, watchers. It's not the Lord that doesn't want to increase you. It's not the Lord that does not care about you living well or you preaching the gospel with whatever and whatever. No, no, please increase. There is a way to get it. There is a way to get it. This is not the time to say, I am too busy to pray. If I were you, let me tell you something. If I were you, I would lock that shop. That shop, I would lock it for 12 hours, six hours, three hours. Go on my knees and let's see which devil. Even if I don't get to get the answer, I'll hit a revelation. I will know this is it. So this is why I can't get what I want. So this is why my shop is not expanding. This is why I'm losing clients. This is why my children cannot be able to, to study. This is why my children have lost it. I took them to church. They were baptized in church. What is happening? Why are my children going everywhere? Why are they drinking? Why are they in drugs? Why are they going to LGBT? Why? Why? Do not agree to some of the things that devil causes you to agree. Watch out. Go on your knees. Hit that door. Until you get to the revelation, you see that door open. You see your kids serve the Lord the way they should. You see your finances increase. You see opportunities that are unusual. You will see supernatural connections that are, you don't even believe you just have them. Increase doesn't come on a silver platter. There is the disposition of prayer, disposition of character disposition of how you speak, disposition of where the word of God is in you. Is it in your head or in your spirit? There is that disposition. And the way things are going, we cannot allow another day for things to continue the way they are. We have to change things now, not tomorrow, but now. I want to say the last thing as I finish. I want to say the last thing as I finish. Matthew 13, 12. This I'm going to say is not to scare you, but it's a spiritual reality. That's why I say, wake up. This is not a sermon for everybody. It's for watchers. Matthew 13, 12 says, for whoever has to him, more will be given and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. You know that. You know that. You've read that story of the talent. All right? The one who had one, it was taken and given to the one who had five. Why was it done like that? Because it's a principle in the spirit. A principle in the spirit, and I'm going to explain to you this. And this affects most of you, especially financially and in your gift, your calling, those things that have been given to you. It happens on a daily basis. Why? It is a financial, I mean, it's a kingdom principle. That's what I want you to understand. You see, whoever has to him more will be given. And he will have what? Abundance, that is increase. He will have increase. Whoever has will be given more to have been. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken. So listen to me, watchers. This principle is in the spirit. That you as a child of God, God has given you something, whether it's a gifting, whether it's a wisdom, whether it's finances, whatever, you, you have something. 
But if you are not going to agree to the law of multiplication, to the law of, you see, what God gives you, it is not to be buried in you, it needs to come out. For example, if it is money, money is to serve him. So if you hold him and all you do with your money is about you, all right? Because that is what the, the Lord counts multiplication with what you do with your money or what you do with your talent. You see, that's why, let me tell you something now so that you can see practically what I mean. Those of you who are from Africa, because it's not just Kenya, but mostly Africa, I know even South Africa. If you look at the gospel industry, if you look at the gospel industry, music industry, people who are gifted, like they would sing until you're like, my God, this is just powerful. Where are they today? Because there has been a move of gospel music. They were gifted, they were talented, but they used the talent to enrich themselves. It was not about impart impartation anymore. It was not about blessing the body of Christ. It was not about going to just do a crusade and bless people and bring uh, souls into the kingdom. It was about, I'm coming to a church to do two songs and I'll need this amount of money. Can you please send me 50% deposit before I come? That was the business they did. Where are they today? I want to see your answers. Where are they today? So this is what I'm talking about. And so what is going to happen, you will notice at this time, there are people that God is lifting in music, all right? They are different. Years ago, you will see musicians who would do just maybe very powerful gospel, and that will be it. We all will be blessed. But if you look at the people God is raising now, you are like, what? How is it possible? So this person, they are powerful intercessors. If you tell them to pray, you'll be shocked. They will pray for 10 hours. They are powerful psalmists. They will come up with a song that has never been sung anywhere and will be accurate. If you tell them to sing the old school, they'll be perfect. Then you wonder what, because to that one, to that one who mismanaged, didn't multiply for the kingdom, it is taken, is given to this one. That happens also financially. That's why you find people who in their visions, they know in their dreams, they know they're supposed to be millionaires. But the more days are going, there is like, it's not manifesting. Your dreams are not coming true. Visions, they look like the Lord lied. No, he didn't lie. Look at your record with God. How are you? When you get a business deal, is it in your mind about the kingdom? If you are given two options with the check you're going to get, if you're given two options to pay a bill in the kingdom and to build your house, what will you take? So these principles have disqualified a lot of people when they were supposed to get increase. I know this is tough, but it's a reality. It's a reality. It's a reality. So in the spirit, I say it is a law of the spirit. In the spirit, when you are wise, you are obedient, you do what you need to do. I tell you, there are so many gifts to pick. It, <laughs> right now, I remember one time I was praying with somebody and then I was just seeing them in the spirit and they were just walking in the spirit and they were picking up things. And as I was looking at what they are picking, I realize this what they're picking is not theirs, but those who be, they belong to, they were not qualified. So this one who is qualified, they are picking this gift, they are, they are picking these abilities as a principle in the spirit. When you're not obedient, when you don't do God's word, when you have been given what you've been given, but your own carnality and lust have caused you to enrich you, you'll be surprised you begin to see the increase you're expecting, it's becoming debt if it's money. If it was an anointing, it's gone, truly gone. I tell you, like I've given you an example. There are musicians today, they didn't die, they are there. Preachers today, they are there, they didn't die, they are there, but you can't hear them. And then the Lord will leave somebody who doesn't even look like they have the stature. But wait until you hear them, you're like, what? How can one person have this much wisdom? No, as a principle in the spirit, there are things they picked. 
uh, this is truth. I wish I could just come here and we just do declarations. And we do that. For those of you who've been here for a long time, you know, when you see, like now when I've taught you this, when I've taught you this, next time I come, I'll, you just hear me declaring now the things that you should increase in. So if a person comes with that Zoom meeting, hears me declaring those things, that you're going to be blessed, will increase, I open doors, I prophesy to you, they will think the way they thought before. But now for you, you know, this is deeper than just increasing. I want to give you an opportunity to give uh, today. Uh, those of you that need to type, uh, if you can have uh, details on the screen. So we have the giving details on the screen. I want to give you opportunities to give and usually this time. Now, I know where we are now, where we are now with what I'm teaching you, go beyond connecting. Go, you know, I keep on hearing that thing that people keep on saying, I'm connecting, it's good. But that is an amateur stage. I am trusting God that people are going to, people will call me and they're like, Pastor Joe, what is the budget? I understand we are going to Nyeri for a crusade in September. What is the budget, Pastor Joyce? Okay, the budget is this much. I'll do it 100%, I'll do it 50%, I'll give 10%. I, I, that is the opportunity I'm giving you today to give. I know some of you here has the possibility of clearing that whole bill or 50% of it. I know it. Why? Because I've taught you the truth. You've been on this platform now for over three years, if I'm not wrong. I've taught you nothing but the truth. And I know most of you have benefited. And you know what, watchers, we are not many, but so far I've seen the faithfulness of God through you. So I'm throwing the challenge to you even as we give today. Don't give usually. Tell the Lord, I, I want to be counted. I want to be counted as we're expanding or increasing the capacity of financial pillars. Lord, you can count on me. Look at God. You would count on Daniel to see that Israel get their deliverance. He would count on Daniel to see that Babylon will begin to worship him. He would count on one man. And so as you get to know this truth, can you be that one man that God can count on to preach the gospel? That even when we are doing what we are doing, it is not just about Charles and Joyce. No, your seed is there. That when we are getting that crowd, even you, I know you pray, but let us just go beyond prayer. So begin to trust God now. I will expand your business, your career. That when we are going there, you can be like, you know what? How many air tickets, Pastor Joyce, do we need? What is the business class air ticket for the man of God that is going to preach? I pay. What is the amount that is for the hall? I'm going to pay for it. Trust God. It's very easy. I've taught you. Get to that point when you get to hit the understanding, the revelation, the wisdom on how to make money. But you cannot hit that revelation if you're financially unfaithful. I will just tell you that you can't. The enemy have legality now to block your knowledge. You understand me? So as you give today, as you give today, be a person who will tell God. So I don't want you to give normally. No. Let us walk by faith. You have had this. Exercise your faith in giving. As you pray, I know we pray. I know we fast. But you see, faith without action is dead. It is very easy to tell people, I'm praying for you. I'm together with you. Give this time. Most of you know I'm one of the kind of person, if there is a place you never get pressure for giving is what just have. We don't have those pressures. Why? Because God has blessed people here. God has blessed people here. <laughs> God has blessed people here. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak your blessing as I have spoken your word. I speak the blessing that is going to cause every giver to know that the word of God is ever true and forever established. Anybody who gives today, Lord, I decree, supernatural doors are going to open for them. Doors of opportunities, doors of increase, doors of supernatural increase and multiplication in knowledge, in wisdom. That what people struggle to do, they will not struggle in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray today, even those who are tithing, I declare, if all they have is their tithe, I speak extreme blessing. 
I declare the word of God that the windows of heaven, which are windows of opportunities, are going to open for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, that even tithers are going to become givers. And Father, I've always prayed that none of our tithers will ever be poor or struggle, not in what has happened. And once again, I establish it in the natural, I establish it in the spirit. None of our tithers, none of our givers will be poor. None of our tithers and our givers will not see an increase in the name of Jesus Christ. As you give, may your eyes open. As you give, let your sacrifice judge the witch that is bewitching your life in Jesus' name. Let your sacrifice be judgmental to the witch that is bewitching your life, bewitching your family, bewitching your finances. Let that sacrifice completely finish every demonic pronunciation against you. Let that sacrifice and that tithe be God's weapon to bring down every diabolic power that says you cannot increase in the name of Jesus. As you decide today to work in obedience economically, let that sacrifice, let that tithe be the judgmental weapon that will finish the powers of darkness that have held you in a place of mediocrity financially in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.